Hi guys and welcome to another edition of Station Tutorials. I apologize you guys, I haven't posted one of these in a while. I've been busy directing, shooting, and editing various videos. This is Swift Karate Chop in concert for the You Slut You music video that I did. All right, let's get started here. Let's do a new composition. We'll do DVC Pro 720 at 23 frames a second, 24 frames a second, okay. Let's grab a bit of this Swifty green screen footage here. When I shot this, I put motion trackers on the green screen, and for this particular shot, there weren't any motion trackers where I needed them, so I just grabbed these little push pins here that I had set in the wall, and um, it worked just fine. So when you track this here, you're going to want to track the rotation, the position, and scale all at the same time, and place both trackers as far apart as possible on significant points that don't leave the frame now. All right, let's just key this out here and we'll grab our key light tool. And I always like dropping behind a white solid layer so I can see how well my key is actually working here. So let's drag the white underneath Swifty and go back to the original comp here. And then we'll adjust our mat so that way we can kind of clean up this key. And that way you can really see what you're doing here when you drop this white layer behind and clean up any mess and uh, grit or noise that you may have going on, grain, whatnot. Then add a little softness here. And all right, now I'm gonna grab this stage footage. This stage footage here, it's actually not footage at all, it's just a still. And I'm gonna drop this behind Swifty. We're gonna make both of these 3D layers. And let's hit S for scale and scale up the stage behind him and position it appropriately so it looks right. And we'll adjust this here. We'll push it back in Z-Space a little bit and scale it up. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna take our tracker from Swifty that we tracked and apply that to the stage. And let's hit apply both X and Y. Okay. And now, it flipped it on us here, so let's just put this number back to zero. All right. And now what you have going on here is the stage image will be tracked to the camera movement. So let's hit position here and make sure all these points are selected when you move this. That way every keyframe will move and you won't just have one individual be offset. So as you can see here now, the background image is replicating the camera movement on the, I think, believe it was a, a zoom out and a pan down that I did at the same time. So now that background image is copying that movement. So the background will stay in position, rotation, and size, and will correlate directly with Swifty's position, rotation, and size. All right, now these motion trackers, they can be very helpful, but they can also be a royal pain. So what you have to do here, and I know it sucks, um, you could have done a roto, but it might not be as clean as it would if you were to key it like I did. So basically what you have to do here is go through and adjust these mask points as you go through and make sure you click your mask path so that way it will keyframe as you go through your footage and adjust accordingly. Now I'm gonna speed this up here so you can see what I'm doing and so it doesn't take as long time lapse this as I go about and do this. So if it seems like I'm moving a little fast, it's because this is at about, you know, 300% right now. So as I'm going through and doing this, basically what I'm doing is just masking out those tracking markers. Now, I know what you're thinking. You may be thinking, well, why, you know, you used the neon orange. Why don't you just key that out? You know, if you, you can try going that route, but a lot of times with an orange color, you're going to lose a lot of flesh tones. You'll lose your pinks and, you know, skin tone colors like that. So if you actually try to key out those markers, if you're using a, you know, a neon color usually works good. 
Um, but you can't always get rid of them. So sometimes there's no better way really than to just go through it just like this. And you know, I had a lot of shots like this in this video. If you check out the video, there'll be a link at the end. And it, did, it wasn't too bad just going through and um, just getting rid of these markers, especially if they don't cross your actor. But unfortunately in this shot, uh, it was kind of in the way of his scarf there dangling. So I did have to go through and mask it out. Um, just kind of walk through frame by frame, make sure I wasn't missing anything. All right, now that that's done, let's go to the end of the composition and we'll line up where we want our stage and frame. And then I'm gonna add a null object here and apply, go back and apply my tracking data to this null. So it'll be like a placeholder, it'll hold everything. And I know one of you guys had suggested this in a tutorial from before, so I'm gonna also show you how to do it this way. Before I didn't show you how to do this because I was just wanting to show you how easy it is to actually copy and paste data to and from different sequences and keep it consistent. All right, now uh, some of you guys may have this, some of you guys may not. I'm gonna add a new black solid and add Video Copilot's optical flares. And we're gonna make this 3D and we're going to make it over transparent and I'm gonna place it up in the corner here. And I'm gonna rename this flare left and then duplicate it and name it flare right so I don't get these two confused. And then after I rename that, I'm gonna go up and grab my right flare and move it over to the right hand side of the screen. And once we get that positioned, then I'm going to jump to the end of my composition now. And now I'm going to take both of my flares, my left flare and my right flare, and parent those to the tracking data that is currently on the null object. Now watch what happens here. As you go back, the flares will now be locked in place to that tracking data. So as the image zooms in, the, those flares will reveal. Now I'm also going to brighten these flares a little bit so you can see them over the image a little bit stronger here at the beginning. And then as you go through here, you'll see that those will be locked right in place in the corner. So those are almost like stage lights coming down on him. And you can change the colors of these. You can do whatever you want with these. These optical flares are truly amazing and well worth the cost for what they are. All right, now I'm going to add a reddish pinkish light here to kind of match the whole feel of the concert and give Swifty the look as if he's actually in that concert environment with the red lights coming down on him instead of just being, you know, the bland green screen footage comped right over the top. This will give it a more blending look. I'm just going to add an ambient light here and bring up the intensity a little bit. And then we'll add a new adjustment layer here. And I'm going to come over to the side here and type in fractal noise. We're going to throw this fractal noise on this new adjustment layer here. And this is going to be our fog or smoky, you know, layer. Kind of give it a little bit more life. And we're going to change this to add and then bring the opacity down <clears throat> to about 15, 13%. And we're going to go to the end again. And we're going to grab our adjustment layer, I'm going to rename this fog, and let's put this, kind of keep things, I like to keep things in order here, bring our null back to the top, parent our fog to the null again, just like we did with the lights, and then you, you guys can play with these settings and make it to your liking, but what's important here is to alt click on the evolution, and we're going to add an expression here and put time times 200. And now you can see when you play this back that Fractal noise will animate as if he's actually in a concert, as if there's fog being, you know, shot out, little smoke, whatever. That's a real easy way to take a still image, some green screen footage, add a couple effects to it, and kind of breathe some life into it. That was real quick, real easy. Go out and try this, and uh, make sure you check out the link at the end for the music video, and you can see how I use this effect. And, uh, you know, make something, use it yourself, make a video response, and I'll check it out. Until next time, this has been Station Tutorials. Leave some comments on what you guys want to see from me, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. I guess the baggage is